Okay, Act Three, Scene One, Forez. Garcel and Gruach are having fruit and pot mead. A refill? More of the delicious mead? I think I will. It's good. It was the king's, but Southern didn't want it, so she left it all for me. You mean the former king? Of course I do. So what else did she leave? A bloody mess. The movers didn't clean. You ought to have her murdered. You can say the movers did it. Uh, come in. Sorry, what's that, Toby? Uh, sorry, my bad. I didn't realize I wasn't muted. Sorry. Okay. Uh, let's take it back to, so what else did she leave? So what else did she leave? A bloody mess. The movers didn't clean. You ought to have her murdered. You can say the movers did it. That's a good idea. They laugh. And <laughs> That's funny, isn't it? What's funny? Oh, you know, the other day, what Southern said. That grandiose old bedlam said a lot. And then you said you'd use those witches to convince your husband and Macduff to do whatever you commanded. That fell through. And then Macduff discovers Duncan in your guest room with a dozen holes in him. There's nothing funny about Cumberland and his ungrateful brother bribing guards to kill a king and cousin in our home. You have no proof of that. It's obvious. Where is your husband anyway? To Scone. All right, D. I will leave this afternoon, but on the morrow, he will sit upon the tennis stone. It seems a bit abrupt. I mean, it all seems rather hasty. You to forest moved before the king was called. How dare your husband be so bold as fly the hands of Scotland's legislative, legislative clock? The tennis board had little to discuss. With Malcolm and his brother hiding out abroad, my husband was the only choice. Macduff has every right to claim the throne. <laughs> They'd never pick Macduff. His trick's too small. It's not that small. Besides, it's not his fault that he was taken from the womb too soon. With all, King Duncan granted Cawdor to my husband, so the board supported him. Macduff deserves the title Cawdor. It was he who be the traitor, not your spouse. That's your opinion, not the law. The law is chemistry, and I believe our king was chosen legally. If we allow opinion to persuade us, I might think your husband killed our once and butchered king. How dare you? Do you not hate the messenger for those a bank house word? Bank huh? Sorry, bank, bank Yeah. Sorry, sorry. Right. Do not hate the messenger. Do not hate the messenger for those a bank word. Ha! Huh. Banco has equivocated on his regicide for days. He now suspects your husband played a part in Duncan's murder, if not all. If Banco makes this difficult, I may be forced to kill him for my country's sake. But it means nothing. Banco talks a lot. Will you be at the coronation, dear? I'm sorry, but I cannot go. I must await the castle gate repairman. This appointment took us months. You understand? Of course. I shall be getting ready now. I have to go to go. The porter will escort you out. You understand? Of course. Exit grow up. Thou hast it, grow, Queen of Scotland. All thy dreams of power greed come true, but how? The happenings of late are strangely born. The king was softly sleeping in his loft before my husband called and found him punched with 20 dagger holes, ironically. But he was on his way to bear the king about the prince and Scotland's tenistry. The prince of Cumberland is suspect too. He fled to England, I presume, because he feared a second regicide or did he bribe the chamber guards as Grouch says. But we shall never know conveniently, for our new monarch has already judged and executed them. They can't deny their crimes. 
The Tain of Glames has gained the most from Duncan's murder, but I can't exclude the others who were there, for none of them, including Ross and Banquo, can I trust. Betimes, I'll to the D weird sisters go to see what else those haggish women know, but first, I'll make Macduff explain why he is sitting idly by while Grauch and her husband take their claim upon our land. Exit for ourselves. Nina, grew up, yeah. grew up, just think grew up, grew up, grew up. Grew up. Grew up, yeah, grew up. Grew up. Two syllables, grew up. Grew up. Okay, good. Okay. Scene two, Forrest, grew up, waits in the inner chamber. The king is dead, and still this kingdom bears the weight of pending war. The blood we shed will lead to more. I fear we've opened up the floodgate only to be drowned in gore. I murdered once for Scotland, hoping it would be the end of killing, yet with blood comes blood, so I must kill again. Alas, this carnage cannot last. We must reverse the cast of rumour caused by Banquo. Quell the chatter of rebellion. Let the folk forget. This death will be the last. I pray to God this murder will be the nail that seals the coffin on the conflict in our whale. Wheel. Wheel. Enter Macbeth and with cape and scepter. Behold our brand new scepter. Where are your balls? They're getting polished. Do you like our cape? They look ridiculous. We love it. What's with all this we shit? Do you have a friend that only you can see? A pocket newt? The only things inside these pants are cock and seven sixpence. It's the royal we. The royal we? The royal we. You see, the king is country, country king. I see. And so we are not an I, we are a we. Stop saying we to me. All righty. Macbeth looks at himself in the mirror. Do you think we need a bigger scepter? Stop it with this we shit. And you do not need a bigger scepter. Compensating for your dark of stick with cakes and sticks will not suppress the rumors of King Duncan's death. You need to focus on the crown and how to keep it on your brow. Right now, the prince is plotting his return and rest assured, he'll risk his fleeing life with double cause to wear the crown and take revenge on me. But people will support him too if they, think, if they believe you killed his father in his sleep. But everyone believes they did the deed. Not Banquel. He's just spreading rumors it was you. Forsooth? I'd never lie to you. And what the devil shall I do? There is a way to fix this, but... But what? You'd have to have a giant set of balls for this. I've got big balls. <laughs> I mean, you'd really have to be a man. A potent Scottish man. I'm potent. I don't know. I am. I am. Oh, please. You hardly have the will to kill your cousin in his sleep. You'd better hire some ne'er-the-wells to carry out this deed. What deed? What deed? The dispatch of your friend. That would take balls. Some ne'er-do-wells, you say? There are these two distressed rapscallions I've been persecuting, just in case. In case? In case I have a dirty deed I need completed. Who the devil does that? Me. Whatever. This could work. Convince those curs that Banquel was the one behind their woe. Engage their tempers. Make them crave revenge. But most importantly, repudiate their manhood till they ache with bated breath to do whatever crimes we ask them to do. When I'm through, they'll do, and, and do, and do. This tune goes manly. But I'm afraid we cannot trust these knaves. Perhaps you ought to send a third assassin. So 
someone you have dirt on so he cannot turn on thee. The Thane of Ross. He'll stoop to any low if he believes that it will profit him politically. Go don your manly clothes. Persuade those desperate men and put an end to Banquo's meddling in the king's affairs. I swear I will. Uh, but first I have to choose the satin for my brand new privy stool. Excellent. My husband is a fool, but Banquo is not. And once, no, sorry, but Ross is not. And once he offs his cousin Banquo, we will hang the deed upon his head and use him as we please. His victim is revered by Scottish serf and Thane alike. If word of Banquo's death were ever loose onto the air, a raging tempest would ensue. If Banquo's dead and Ross is in my control, my husband might be king until he's old. That's it, grew up. Uh, Cleo? Yes. Uh, you had the rhyme earlier on in the scene. Uh, the, the rhyming pattern, you use woe, the word woe, like woe is me, W-O. Right. Banquo, woe, it's that sound, okay? Banquo. Banquo, yes. Banquo. Okay, okay. Thank you. Whoa. My, my pleasure. Scene three, Fife, Darcel, Darcel, sorry, Darcel and Macduff are in bed together. Ooh. So I needed that. Oh, you needed sex for 30 seconds. Yeah. Well, lucky you. That troubles thee. Is this about the dog? Because I swear I didn't leave the chain. It's not about the mangy mutt. And what? What keeps thee idly waiting while the king solidifies his power? Every day that passes here amasses greater strength, and every day your chance to take the throne of Scotland wanes. It's interesting. You found the body. Ere you got there, no one saw him dead or sleeping. Maybe you and Glames are lodged together in this study game. Stratagem. Stratagem. Oh, Dare you? I would never harm our king. That morning you were on your way to bird him for the throne. Did you so soon forget? Uh, I wasn't going to kill him in his bed. Then why have you not stopped that tyrant yet? You, you cannot say that he's a tyrant. What offense has he committed? Regicide. So what? So what? So what? It's Scotland. That's just what we do. We're born, we fight, we die, especially our king. The crown and throne of Scotland come with sway and power, but they also come with danger. For the one who sits upon the Tannistone is made a target by his laurel thanes for life. If that's just what you do, then why aren't you at Forest taking what is rightly yours? I cannot justify the murder of the king with speculation. Duncan named his elder son the Prince of Cumberland, which gave my cousin grounds to take the crown from him, but I don't have a grievance yet. I think the two of you are in cahoots. What would I gain by lying down with snakes? He murdered Duncan in his sleep. What do you think that lunatic will do to me? You are afraid. God damn it, I am not. If you were half the man you claim to be, you'd stand before him at tomorrow's feast and with your saber's edge, remove his head. And then what? Then you speak. A speech like that of Anthony in Apian's account. Just a tale. It's not that easy to persuade an angry mob to change its mind. I'll help you do it. I will write the speech. I, I guess you'll also brandish the sword with me? With, when all the thanes of Scotland disagree? I'm better with a raper than thee. Oh, don't be silly. OK. 
Okay, everything's frozen. Would you like to try? Nina? Did we lose Nina? I'm frozen, shit. Ah! I hear you. Yeah, I think Nina's gone, uh, but we got used to. Okay, I thought I, thought I had so much trouble with my internet, like, I hate it. Nina's Seems gone, like okay, uh, Michelle, are you there? Michelle? Would you like to try? Thank you, yeah. You know I pulled my hamstring yesterday. It doesn't matter. If you don't, if you won't agree to face him at the feast, I have a plan to take possession of the tyrant's hand, of the tyrant's mind. Don't do. What can a feeble woman do? You fool. Go on then. Be as useless as your tool. You're both just small and feckless pricks. Come on. It's not that small. It isn't if you're 10. But you're supposed to be a man. I am a man. Then do something about that tyrant king. I will. And you will see. See what? Macduff is more than just a man. Macduff. <laughs> Macduff, how dare you turn your back upon your chicken and his dam. Your country, too. Oh, what a craven traitor you turned out to be. I only married thee because I thought that one day you'd at least attempt to sit upon the tainted stone. But no, you've probably assumed that I'll remain here waiting while you hide and cower like a child, wherever you, you're absconding to be. But I am not as impotent as you. I'll hoist the tyrant by my own petard. He's just a man, it shouldn't be that hard. Yeah, some good poetry there, brother. Nina, are you back? Okay. Uh, scene four, Forrest. Macbeth and Ruach sit alone at a dinner table set for six. What happened to your dinner guest, my lord? Where's Fife? Have you not spoken to his wife? He didn't show up to watch you lay your bum upon that stupid stone. What makes you think he wants to come and watch your fat ass eat? The coronation first and now my feast? I think he might be breaking up with me. You've still got Ross, your loyal sycophant. Where is that slavish rascal anyway? Enter Ross, covered in dirt and blood. God, Tit, what sent you this? But soft, it's Ross. Macbeth gets up and speaks with Ross in private. He looks like shit. I fear the fame has been undone. That's not how victory appears. But if he managed to entwine the last untethered laces, bring this to an end, and stop the war and fray in Scotland, I will sleep as well as Banquo in his grave. Ross leaves, Macbeth returns. He is shaken up and exaggerating wildly. What happened? What did Ross reveal to you? The boy. Macbeth slumps in his chair. What boy? The boy, the, the fucking boy! Macbeth Who goes there? Who goes, Who goes there? Who goes where? It's you. There's blood upon thy hair. What happened to your head? Did you get drunk and, and fall and crack your skull? You see, Bantam, who is he talking to? Oh, Banquo. No, of course not. What? We're, we're best friends. We risked our lives together, drove the rebels from the land. We've shed our sweat together, seen each other naked. <laughs> what? The castle spa. You're having intercourse with nothing. It's a figment of your mind. It's Banquo. I can see him with my eyes. You're seeing nothing. Trust me, it's a dream. The shame you feel from sending Ross to do your dirty work has made this rape appear. How dare you? No, I didn't tell that fiend to execute your little fleance too. You ordered Ross to murder Banquo, Banquo's son. What hath the harmless toddler fleance done? 
It's just as much a threat as Banquo was. I mean, I didn't know that Ross was going to do that, but it matters not, he's, he's still alive. And Banquo lives inside my mind. Here, take this drink, retire to sleep, and let the balm of tortured mind restore your head. Macbeth takes the drink and starts to exit, stops mid-course. I told you I already paid you back that money you lent. Stop asking me. It's just a blasted vision. Go to bed. Exit Macbeth. A boy. A harmless boy. Who told that man to order Ross to lay his fiendish hands upon a boy? Thank God he got away. Or Ross's cries would lay like lead upon my heart and head until the end of craft time. My husband hath upon across a threshold left. His visions grow, and like Achilles, he is now envisioning his mind's command. I'll use my wit to tweak them just a little bit, and take for mine his superstitious mind, or else he'll find a way to tyranny. The three sisters three convinced him they could see the future. If I drug his flagon with a dose or two of henbane boots and had the sisters use their chanting to induce hallucination, the unholy ghost in his imagination will persuade him to believe whatever those women say. To Albert's countryside, I'll set a fly and show those haggish sisters how to lie. Exit grew up. Scene five, a hut. So this is uh, Cleo. You'll be playing Alanis this time. Okay. Right? Okay. Uh, Nina, are you back? Uh oh. Uh, okay. Uh, I'll tell you what. Oliver, you there? Oliver. I'm here. Hello. Okay. Oliver, uh, you're going to read uh, Darcel. Okay. Macbeth's okay. wife. Okay. So we, we seem to have lost Nina. Okay. Uh, scene five a hut. Darcel waits without a country hovel. She knocks at the door. Who's knocking now? Oh, sorry. I won't be. Uh, James, that anoint thee or aroint? Uh, aroint means get out. It's uh, it's from the originals. The aroint. Which is okay. uh -huh. okay. aroint means get out. All right, let's uh, let's take it again from the top. Darcel waits without a country hovel. She knocks at the door. Who's knocking now? Aroint thee. You're muted, Michelle. Where's sleep? It's me, Darcel, your niece. Come hither, please. The hovel door opens and from it emerge the three ancient, irascible, hairy, tattooed women, Agnes, Alanis, and Euphemy, spitting, belching, cursing, etc. Darcel. Agnes hugs Darcel, and then Darcel hugs Alanis and Euphemy. Darcel. Darcel. What bringeth thee? To our hovel. On this country, her heath. The Lady Gruach, you've been helping her. You, you asked us to. You told us. You were friends. I did, I did. But now I think I've made a grave mistake and aided her and that despotic husband in their quest to take control of Scotland. He had intercourse with thee and, retur and then returned to Inverness to put a dozen holes in Duncan's chest. What poison didst thou pour into his ear? We merely said what Gruach told us to do. Tis true, but you fame embellished too. It wasn't my idea, it was Agnes. Embellished what? Oh, nothing. It was trite. We told him he was a handsome. Spit it out. The king. The king. The king hereafter. We addressed him as the king, for we believed this plan would help us fleece the future king, queen. But we could not have known she'd be the queen. Who knew he'd murder Duncan in his sleep? Enough, 
you fagma fuss. Enough. The blood of Duncan taints your old and wrinkled hands. <gasps> Do you have any clue the damage you have done to Scotland? We live in a hut. Whoever's king. It matters not to us. Wouldn't have to live inside that dump. Your sister's grown first. <laughs> inside that modest hovel, if we had a peaceful kingdom and an honest king, all our fines and fees and taxes go to sharpening their battle axes for this ceaseless test of manliness called war. King Duncan wanted peace, but he was killed while he was sleeping. Now we cannot sleep, for he who killed our king will kill again. There's nothing we can do. We're beggared hags. You're so beggared. Where do you get that gold around your neck? And where do you get that charm? And where do you get that bracelet on your arm? The sisters hide their new trinkets, play dumb, and look away, etc. She's been here, hasn't she? She's come again. What did she tell thee? What did she convince you wretched bags of flesh to do this time? The sisters chatter incoherently. Garcel throws a bag of gold coins on the ground. The sisters fight over it. There's more if you can help me stop that whore. What did she say to thee? What has she planned? She told us to reveal two futures, one in which the king returned the land to peace and died asleep with gray upon his face. And one in which a hated tyrant lost his patent battle to the brave Macduff. She then instructed us to tell the king that he has options still, that he is not enfettered by the fates. He has free will. Mom. I'll give her that. Oh, shut your traps. The brave Macduff, you say. I have a plan. Convince the king that nothing, I mean not a thing that lives on earth can conquer him. If he believes that he's invincible, he'll let his guard down, let protection wane, and overconfidence will be the flaw that makes this vile and tragic hero fall. We'll do it. You can reckon on us all. Marcel and the sisters go inside the hut and curtain.